In this video, we're going to focus on how to use the Fetch API to extract data. So basically, we have here a uh, financial report with a lot of data here with different layers of data. And it's a good exercise here to explore how to do this. You can see here we have our chart. But if you click on Fetch now, it will grab all these values here, which are directly, you can see here, everything is changing, all the values, the title, etc., which is directly matched with here you can see our financial report our company name chart js corp and then all of these data here that we have also in here so let's start to explore how to do this right now so we'll be focusing here on the fetch and display advanced json data in chart js so let me show you first of all the structure what we have here and if you would look we can see here as well if i click on this tab here we are going to the finance.json file which is basically all the json code we're going to use so i click here you can see it as well on the browser just a quick note this is a local host so you need to have a local host a web server or you're on your hosting to do this else you cannot use fetch api to connect the file very important here so you can see here, and this is the reason I'm going deeper into this topic here is because this finance.json file has multiple layers deep. You can see here, this is the first layer, second layer, and then we have the third layer with all of these different data. And what I want to do now is to focus on this, how we can extract certain values from this and put it in our chart. All right, to do this, we go here to chartjs uh, 3com getting started. Let's go to this specific link here. And then we're going to copy this code here. Once we copy this chunk of code, we will paste this in here. So we're going here, we'll paste this in here nicely. And then what I will do is just for me, cut out the title, put in here the title, save that. All right, ignore that one and refresh. All right, so now we have our bar chart here. And what we want to do now is start drawing or at least fetching the data we have in here and put it in here and we're going to explore how to do it with these more advanced items your layers deep and how we can extract certain other items as well so to do this what we need to do here is we're going down here at the very bottom or not at the bottom but just here and then at the top of the script so this is the starting point of the javascript we need to use the fetch block so we're going to put a fetch block here and this is extremely important to remember fetch must start at the very top of a javascript or else it will not work that is not so that's a uh, requirement in the uh, javascript structure so what we're going to do here now is we're going to write our fetch code so the first thing what we're going to do here we're going to say async for asynchronize and we say here the function so this will already indicate that this is a fetch function and then we can give it a function name, it could be anything, let's say fetch data. And once we fetch the data, what we're going to do here is we're going to grab the URL where the JSON file is located. In this case, the JSON file is located on the same hosting as where the file or basically where the uh, HTML file is located. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just grab this file. And if you don't have this file, I will put in a copy of this in the comment section so you can immediately follow along as well. So what we're going to do in here, we're going to say here the following. We're going to give it a constant, and then we say this constant will be the URL of the file. I'll just give it a name of URL, single quotation, and then we just paste in the URL of the JSON file, which is finance.json. It, it requires this specific ending here. So once we did this, the next thing what we need to do is we need to create a response. Basically, our goal is now we have this, we're saying we have a fetch or a synchronized function here. We want to fetch data. So we want to send this command with where we're going to extract the data, which is this specific URL. So what we're going to say here is we create a constant and this constant we will call response. We can call it anything we want, but response is fine, quite practical in our case. So we say here, we're response and then we say await meaning we're waiting for a uh, fetch we're going to fetch something and we are waiting for a response that's basically what we're doing here and the fetch will be from a specific item basically 
the URL or where are we going to fetch data? And if you're wondering what does fetch mean, fetch is basically when you throw a bone and a dog is going to grab the bone, it's running to your back, that's what we call fetching. So basically you throw something out and the dog come back with that bone, basically that's what fetch is. So you throw it out, you throw out a specific URL and it will fetch you or it will grab the data that you want. That's fetch. All right, so I guess a proper naming in JavaScript as well. So once we have this, what we need to do here is then wait for a response or not even waiting for a response, we need to wait for the desired response. So basically we wait until the request has been completed. So once the request has been completed, what we can do here is the following is to get the response back. So we can say here a constant, and we can say here data, well, we can say here data points, since these are all data points, equals await response dot JSON, meaning we're expecting JSON data, but we make sure that this JSON data is also converted into JavaScript readable structure. So this basically here we're parsing the JSON immediately so JavaScript can read it. And parsing means readable JavaScript or make something readable for a specific language, in this case, JavaScript. All right, so now we have this. We can check if we get a proper response that is what we desire by checking the, uh, well, we can do here console log by just checking what the data points constant gives us. Let's copy this, put it in here. And then if we save this now, it could be a semicolon as well, we can save this, and then we, we go back here and refresh, open up our developer tab. And you can see here now if we get a proper fetch. Well, of course, I guess there's still nothing being uh, done, and the reason why is it doesn't indicate yet. We need to uh, basically grab this function to do something. So what we have to do here is just maybe just to activate it. We're going to put in here button. In this button, we can say here on click equals the fetch data function. So we want to trigger this, say fetch now. Save this, refresh, click on this, and now you can see here we're going to fetch it immediately and instantly it grabs here everything and it grabs you in nice JSON data, or sorry, from JSON it parses nicely into JavaScript readable data. And this is exactly what we want, because you can see here, we get these multi layers of data here. And this is quite nice. So basically we have this now, but we're not done here. Once we did this, what we need to do is we need to return the data points. And the reason why we do return here is because this just fetches the data, and then we have this console log that just reads it and the returning will basically save or store that data. If you don't do this, it will not store anything. All right, so this is extremely important. It does, it will not do anything here visually, but and in the back end or basically in the console log or in behind the scenes, it remembers the data. And this is essential because later on, we're going to grab this data. All right, so now what we're going to do is basically how can we start to use this data and convert all of this here into whatever we want. Well, in this case, we want to have certain values here. We want to grab all of these items here. We have this, we can just convert anything here. The moment we click on fetch, it should convert it all. All right, so let's do this right now. So what we say is the following. We're going to grab this function here, and this function will now do something. So we say this function, we have to say dot, then, then data points, so we're going to grab all of these data points. We have a fat arrow. And in here, we're going to start doing our items. Basically, what we want to do is here, really extract the specific items that we need. And what are those? So we can say here, constant. In this case, we would just say we'll grab the month first. So we have here, you can see here, the weekdays. And let's convert them to the month. And if we look here, we can see here, it goes in here from financials, which is a zero, it is means an array, and then we have here the date. That is a specific month. We can read it here as well. We're going to grab the dates here, but we will have to look through this, every single one of them, and push them into an array, 
or basically it is in an array, but we have to loop them through in a nice array to easily extract these. All right, that's what we're going to do here. We can say a month, constant month equals, and then we say, all right, where is this exactly located? If we look at it, we have the data points. So we grab the data points, and then where? We have to put in a dot, and we can see here, where is it located? Well, we want to get the array. We can get this year, which we can get, but we want to get specifically first the financial report, because in here, this is an array as well. And then, not only do we want to be in the financial report, we need to be in the financials here, which is another layer deep, and then we go to the date. And the date here, which is maybe not the right name for it, should be month, but the date here, well, uh, that's the one we need to extract, or specifically here, the value of date, which is the month of this. All right, so that's what we're going to do right now. So we're going to break it down. We go here, financial report, so data points out, dot financial report, dot. We go here to financials, dot. And then here, in the financials, we don't want to go deeper specifically here. That's not needed. What we will do here is we will loop it through into an array. So we say a map, which is a function, and this function can loop through the entire array, and then we can pinpoint a specific value that we want. In this case, we want to pinpoint this one here. However, with this structure, we could also grab any other value. So we don't have to duplicate this code multiple times, or basically here, we don't have to go very layer, uh, many layers deep. Just use this structure here, because we do have to duplicate it here for the fetching for, with this. However, that doesn't matter. We're going to grab now the specific item. So we say here, the map, and this function will grab the following item. What are we going to grab here? All right, pay attention here, because I have here the parentheses, and here we're going to do curly braces. All right, so don't get confused here. Maybe I will just break this down in here. All right, so you can see it nicely. So this is very clear here. So in this function, we have a parameter, and the parameter is basically the index number, which is one or zero, one, etc., etc. So we call this here the element or the index number. We just say index. So we will look through this, every one of them in the index, and then what we will do here is the following. We're going to say here, return. What are we going to return? Well, we're going to return one specific item here, which is the, uh, the uh, what was that, the date item here. So we say return index dot date. But once we have this semicolon here, we can start using this because basically now we have this, we save this now, and then we could even here do a console. Oh, or we have to do it outside of this item here and the reason why this is basically our loop the map basically loops through this so we go outside the loop here console log and then we can grab here month and then we can see what will be the result here semicolon here and if i save this now and go back here and refresh uh all right so we have some error here map up undefined all right we have here the data points financial report dot financials map so let's let's quickly check what's going on here all right, so I quickly checked and I realized, of course, this is very important. This is why we're going layers deep here. So let me explain here what is going on. So we had this part here. So we're going to look at this JSON file here. And then here, if you look at this, we have the financial report. And then you have a bracket here indicating, very important, indicating that this is an array. So if this is an array, it goes down here. And then afterwards, here is another array. So what we need to do here, this is the first chunk of code in this array. So this is a index number. We need to indicate an index number in here, meaning here in the financial report, we have index number is zero. All right, so if we save this now, go back here, there we are. So now it works nicely and you can see our array is being shown nicely here as well. So what we're going to do here basically is now to echo out this response. So if I do this, if I click on that, you can see here this works. All right, we grab all of this, we have all of the values here, all right, that is fine. But what I want to do now is to activate the function here. So what we need to do here, now we have this fetch data. And this fetch data over here was first used just temporary to show you the result. What we're going to do here now is create a function. And let's say update chart. And then here, the update chart is basically our function here. That is the overall, it nests the 
we nest the entire function in here. All right. And then what we're going to do here is basically update a certain item. So what we want to do here is now we will say the following because we need to update this specific label here, the label. So we say here, we're going to grab here my chart. And then we say here dot config. And if you're wondering, how do we get this? Well, basically we're going to grab it from here. We say here for my chart config, and then we go to data and how we go from config from my chart because of this one here. Then we go to data and from data, we're going here to the specific item, which is the labels. All right, so my chart data dot labels equals whatever we will have in here. Well, in this case, it's the month. So we're going to put in here the month. And once we did this semicolon here, and we say here, my chart dot update. All right, so if I save this now and refresh, you can see here now, if you fetch now, fetch data is not defined. Oh, of course, it, this is of course not defined too because we have now another function nested within here. So we save this, go back here, press on this, you can see here now it changes nicely. All right, so this is the first one. So let's go and try to grab some other items as well. So we have this one here. What we could do as well is we could even go one layer uh, lesser or undeep because of this. We could go one layer undeep by removing this and then here we have to go one deeper. But that's all right for now. So, but we could do the following as well. We could have uh, some other options as well here. What we can do here is let's grab the specific data. So we're going to do another item here. So what we can do is basically duplicate this chunk of code here and do another one as well. So we have here related to the month and let's say we want to grab something else. So what would we like to grab? We can grab here a specific item here. Let's say we will grab now the revenue. So what we have to do here is the following. Just copy this because basically here the fetch with this loop here is consistently working. So we can just duplicate this and put it in here. So we say in here, and then I just have this jumped in here, or this was properly indented. Now what we can do here is the following. We can say here, uh, instead of uh, cost, we can do here maybe, what was the term? Let's grab the revenue. We're going to grab the revenue. So we say here, cons revenue equals, and then here index.date, we can do here revenue. And once we did that, we can say here instead of the month, or we can just duplicate this. And we shall say now, we will result the revenue. If I refresh again, fetch now, you will see now we get the revenue value. Of course, the revenue has not been assigned yet in here. So let's do this right now. So once we have this one, what we can do here as well, we can update again our chart. And what we want to update now is our not our data labels. Now we want to update as well the data itself, which is in the data set. So we say data sets. If remember, this is an array here, same as well. We say zero and then dot data equals revenue. So if I save that one, refresh, and we do that. There you are. You can see now it changed as well. So next thing what we could do would be to maybe change this weekly sales as well we can change that but the weekly sales to change we will have a slight different item because right now we have this here and this is fine but we went very we went basically deeper in here just to grab only this specific part so if we have to jump up let's say we want to get the company name or the stock name then what we need to do is we really need to go one layer up because here you can see this part here has been too deep or we have to make another fetch data. I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go one level up. So we're going to cut this out. We're going to cut that one out. And then what we're going to do is here, we have this index date, but then the index date must go from one up as well. So what we need to do is here, we go in here, and then what we need to do here is, we will start from basically from this. So we go to financials first and then date so we say index dot financials and then we have this one here so if we do this we save that and then we refresh and let's look all right so we've got now a tiny error so 
Uh, and the reason why here is it's something doesn't work. Don't worry about it. We're going to solve this right now. All right, so I just figured out what I did wrong. Of course, this is absolutely, I'm not paying attention. So what we need to do, of course, we don't have to to adjust anything in here. It doesn't make any sense at all. So I'm going to put this back. And the reason why we don't need to do this is we can just copy the code and we adjust this. I am completely not paying attention on that one. But then once we have this, you will see now this will work. All right, so let's undo this all. So to make sure that this everything is working nicely. So save that. Let me refresh. We have all of this. All right, so this works all nicely. So what we wanted to grab is, of course, the company name. If we pay attention where is it is located, it's located in the financial report. So if you look at our code here, we already have our basic structure. All we need to do now is just to copy this. Let's put it in here. We can call this our company name. So let's say this one, we're going to grab this company name here, put it in here. And then here, we can remove this. I'm going to remove this one as well, of course. Because then we can just pinpoint on which item we want. And then we say name. Once we do this, you can just say here company name. And you will see now this one will work nicely. I want to hide this console here for the revenue. Go back here, refresh. Then we click on this. And then you can see here we get now the company name, which is ChartJS Corporation. Beautiful. And this is a index of zero. So that means it's first array value. All right, so what we're going to do here then is now to show this specific value. So how do we show this? Well, basically, if we go in here. Uh, let's see where is the value here in the labels of weekly sales. And basically, we're going to say here, and this is pay attention. This is labels with an S. And the other one's label. All right, so we're going to grab this. Put this in here. And then we say here, let's look for the official location. We go into data sets. 0 dot label without the s and then we say equals company name so once we get this let's see if this works because this is considered as an array so we have to see if this one will work like that or else we need to adjust that one as well refresh click here on fetch then you can see here charge as corporation beautiful and if this is an array we could also put in here a force value of the first value in this specific array and I'm sure we can go another level deeper, but eventually that's the one we should go, where we can duplicate this. Imagine, imagine you have not only one company, but multiple, but I will cover it in another video. So this is basically a level deeper with the uh, JSON parts. And if you have any questions regarding this, put them in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, maybe you also tend to use different files like a CSV file uh, where you work with with uh, ChartJS and in that case I would highly recommend you to check out this specific video where we explore how to update a chart dynamically based on CSV files in ChartJS. The link will pop up somewhere on the screen already and this one is a different way of doing it instead of using a JSON file.